right now we are all experiencing a lot of stress, a lot of tension. I mean, people are really on edge right now. And, and we, we all have our breaking point, don't we? I mean, maybe you've already had your breaking point. I, I know I experienced my breaking point four weeks ago. So as most of you know, four weeks ago, my father-in-law, Russell Larson, 91, uh, went to be with Jesus. He was at Veteran Center in Claremore. Uh, I've shared this story already, but for those of you that are new, uh, he had been at the Veteran Center uh, for a couple of years, and for five months, my mother-in-law wasn't able to go in there because they weren't letting anybody come, come see the veterans there because of COVID. And then he was in the final hours of his life, and God did this incredible miracle like I have few I've seen in my life. On her birthday, the Veteran Center called and said, hey, we want you to come and have time with Russell. So we jumped in our car, went to the Veterans Center. We were there all day sitting by his bedside. It was honestly very, very beautiful. Brutal is what I call it. Brutal and beautiful at the same time. We, we sang songs over him. We, we prayed over him, read scripture over him, shared memories together. And, but, but to be honest, it was a very, very exhausting day. If you've ever been there, all day. We didn't leave till almost 11 o'clock that night. Honestly, because we didn't want to because we knew this was probably going to be the last time we saw him. So we left, and we were just completely exhausted and went home and finally got to bed around 1, and, and uh, my phone rang at 6 a.m., and it was the Veterans Center, and, and they told me that uh, Russ had passed. So I woke up Laura and told her the news, and uh, we went downstairs because my mother-in-law lives with us, and I went down and... Uh, went into her room, sat on her bed, and we just kind of sat in silence, to be honest with you. Just, it, was, um, it was hard. And the crazy thing, though, was that <laughs> two hours later, I had to get in my truck and drive to Dallas. And it's because I was performing the wedding of Jim Bowie. Some of you know Jim Bowie. He grew up pretty much in this church, and Jim's kind of been like a son to me. He doesn't have a dad, and he was getting married, and there's no way I was going to miss that. But yet here I was with this wrestling of my father-in-law's just passed. I got to leave my mother-in-law and my wife who, and, and, and who are grieving, and I got to drive to Dallas, and, and I was just conflicted. But I knew I needed to go, and they gave me um, their uh, blessing to go. And so I got in my truck, and, and I began this drive to Dallas. Now, anybody who's ever been to Dallas, you know you go down Highway 75, and when you go down Highway 75, you go through small town after small town after small town. And there's always a greeting party waiting on you in every one of these small towns. You know what I'm talking about? It's like a little ticker tape parade with the little red lights and things like that. You got to be careful because they are speed trap after speed trap after speed trap. I knew this. I've been done the tri drive plenty of times. And so I said to myself, Brad, you're overwhelmed emotionally. You're exhausted physically. You're mentally depleted. Pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. So, so every town, I slowed down. There it is. There's a sign. I'm slowing down and slowing down, slowing down, except for that one time <laughs> when I was honestly just completely lost in my thoughts of what was taking place. And I, I, I look over and in the brush, there he is waiting on me, the greeting party for the city. Yes, the uh, police officer. I see him. I look down. I'm going 65. But the bad news was I look up and the sign says 45. I knew what was going to happen. He comes up behind me, Woo! lights come on. I pull over to the side. As he's walking up to the vehicle, I'm frankly in this moment just overwhelmed. As he comes up to the window, I'm honestly, I'm physically just shaking. And he's kind of looking at me and I'm just, because I'm just so overwhelmed. And I'm thinking, Brad, keep it together, keep it together, keep it together, keep it together. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, license and insurance verification, please. And I said, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. And so I lean over uh, towards the glove box. And as I'm leaning towards the glove box, that's when it happens. That's when I had my moment and I broke. I mean, wept like a two-year-old. I was bawling uncontrollably. I just, all of my emotion came out in that moment and I just sat back and I'm just like trying to get it together and this police officer's looking at me like, okay, license and insurance, please, because he doesn't know what's happening. And I'm like, oh, okay, all right. And I'm digging through the glove box, but I, I, 
At this point, I can't even, it's like I can't even read anymore. I don't even know what numbers mean. And I actually take everything out of the glove box. I dump it into the passenger seat and I'm hunting around for it. And I just sit back and I say, I'm sorry, sir. And he said, are you okay? And I said, no, I'm not. And I began to explain to him what I just told to you earlier and the events that had taken place. And then I began to look and I said, give me a second. And I found the card and I handed it to him. And he looked at my license and my insurance verification and he handed it back to me and he said, sir, I hope you have a better day. Whew. We all have our breaking point, don't we? I mean, some of us, we lash out in anger. Some of us, we cry. Some of us uh, withdraw from people. Some of us curl up in the fetal position and break down in front of the police. I mean, we all have different ways in which we have our breaking point. And David here in Psalm chapter four, he's at his breaking point, yet somehow he finds peace. Look at verse eight, go back to verse eight. He says, in peace, I will lie down and sleep for you alone, O Lord, will keep me safe. Have, have you ever gone to bed stressed out and overwhelmed by a problem and then woken up at 3 a.m. in a complete panic? You're like, <gasps> How am I going to solve this? What am I going to do? It's never going to end. What is this going to happen? I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm not, I, nobody's ever gone to bed stressed and overwhelmed, woke up at 3 a.m. and went, bling, problem solved. Now I'm going to rest in peace. No, none of us have ever had that happen. So is it possible to lie down and sleep in peace with all that's happening around us? I mean, we got a pandemic. We've got racial unrest. We've got uh, an election coming up, a crazy one at that, very volatile. We've got hurricanes, we've got fires, and then you've got your personal problems all on top of that. I've been reading a um, biography about Lewis and Clark. I was talking about this a couple of weeks ago, but Lewis and Clark, they kept journals on their journey uh, trying to find a passageway to the Pacific Northwest. And they faced overwhelming obstacles in their way, attacks from bears, they, um, they, there were people that came up against them, tried to kill them, uh, harsh winter elements, hail, snowstorms, uh, points where they had very few supplies left. And when you look in their journals over and over again, they just simply say this, we proceeded on. Bear attack, we proceeded on. Hail and winter storms and we proceeded on. I want you to write this down. If you're taking notes, I can press on in peace. I can press on in peace. This is what David did. He's hunted by his son, false accusations against him, yet he pressed on in peace. How? How was David able to do this? The answer is actually right there in verse 8. He looked to the author of peace. He said, for you alone, Lord, will keep me safe. 